Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Soap Queen TV and Brambleberry.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to expand on the basic layering concepts in episode 12. Today, we're going to be making funky 80s geometric soap. Big thanks to Paula from PJ Soaps for the inspiration for this idea. Some tips for making sure your geometric soap turns out snazzy. One, uninterrupted time is necessary. This soap takes at least an hour to make, if not longer. Two, non-bleeding colors are essential for making sure your lines stay crisp and clean. In this project today, I'm using ultramarine blue, chromium green oxide, apricot blush mica, aqua pearl mica, and super pearly white mica. They all are wonderfully contrasting colors that mix and match together perfectly. Three, a stable prop for your mold is crucial. Here, I'm using children's molding clay. Take your children's molding clay and roll it out into a thick, fat, snake-like shape. Place this underneath your mold. Now, look at the angle. When you pour your soap, you want your soap to form a triangle at the bottom of your soap mold. Is that angle right? If it's not, keep adjusting so that you can make sure your first layer is perfect. Melt 12 ounces of clear soap. Why 12 ounces? Well, the Brambleberry.com loaf mold holds around two and a half to three pounds of soap. So, I'm going to be doing four layers. Therefore, to split those layers up evenly, 12 ounces is about ideal. For this project, I've decided to use lemon cake fragrance. This fragrance is amazing. It smells like lemons, cakes, frosting, it's yummy. But it has vanilla in it to add that touch of sweetness. So I also need to use vanilla color stabilizer. If you don't know how to use vanilla color stabilizer, or maybe you've forgotten, refer back to episode seven, where I talk about tips and tricks for using vanilla color stabilizer. Now that I've fragranced and colored my soap and added the vanilla color stabilizer, it's time to pour that first layer. Make sure your soap mold is very stable before pouring that first layer of soap. Pour the first layer of soap slowly and evenly. Spritz with rubbing alcohol. You want to wait a minimum of 15 to 30 minutes until a very, very thick layer has formed on the top of your soap. If the layer is too thin and then you go to re-angle your soap for the next angle, it's possible that the soap may break through that layer, making your hard work all for naught. Now that my first layer has sat well enough for me to re-angle it and reposition it for a second layer, it's time to make that second layer. Melt another 12 ounces of soap in the microwave. For this layer, I'm going to be using green pigment and super pearly white. that second layer. Reposition your soap mold. Take your children's molding clay and change it so that your shape for your second layer will be also angled but not on the same exact angle as the first. Spritz your first layer liberally with alcohol. Check that second layer of soap. Is it steaming? Is it boiling? Too hot soap will melt that first layer. Pour the second layer evenly and slowly. If you pour too quickly, you could end up tipping over your mold. Allow this second layer to harden and repeat with the apricot blush and the aqua pearl layers. I know it's tempting and you want to see your creation as fast as possible. I understand this, but no refrigeration and no freezer time. The reason for this is that when you put your soap in the refrigerator or freezer, the various layers harden at different rates, causing the layers to pull apart. After your soap is hardened naturally, it's time to release the soap. Pull gently away from the sides of the soap mold. This breaks the airlock. Flip the loaf mold over. Push gently down with the palm of your hand. You don't need to work that hard though. Gravity will naturally pull this three pounds of soap out of the mold. If you have to push too hard or you're noticing your fingers are cramping, that's because the soap isn't ready to come out. Now that the soap is out, it looks beautiful. Are you ready to cut it? 
I'm using a scraper cutter tool from Brambleberry.com to cut this. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the most beautiful bar of soap you've ever seen? Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Soap Queen TV. There are so many options for making this technique shine. For example, you could do rainbow colors and do many, many layers. Or you could do graduated colors where you start with a bright primary color, then each layer gets progressively lighter. It'd be awesome. Join me on the next episode when we discuss how to make equal layers and I show you my secret tip for making your layers perfect. Until then, happy soaping! Set, go! All the girls stepping out for a public affair.